The mission of our channel has always been to provide our viewers with impartial evidence found through ruthless logic, visual investigation, and expeditions to ancient sites far too advanced to have been constructed by said culprits within currently known history, that being post-Ice Age man. Highly precise, highly advanced, or often enormous megalithic features, which not only exposes deliberate inaccuracies regarding currently guarded, staunchly defended, and academically regurgitated explanations of our history as a whole. The ancient Egyptians' construction of the Great Pyramids, for example, is not only argued as true by those who themselves have experienced this same conditioning and to never allow intellectual deviation. We are taught by nearly every influential medium, every aspect of historical study, an incomplete tale of events. For once anyone begins to question the legitimacy or the mainstream explanation for these sites and the construction events they would have been, it naturally leads to one unraveling more and more enigmas, anomalies, and inconsistencies within not only the tale of Giza, but countless aspects of currently pushed explanations for so many sites that contain to this day unexplained, remarkably precise, often ingenious methods of construction, all ignored by academia as a whole. For not only is Khufu's pyramid 6.5 million tons polar to this unimaginably enormous undertaking it must have been to cut, move, and use so many stones at that location, with a plateau also argued by some as having artificial origins. Longyu Cave in China is yet another enormous ancient unexplained site, similar to Durinkyu, another ancient underground city found within Turkey. Longyu Cave has a staggeringly huge inner footprint, the many millions of metric tons of stone hollowed out to create the cave system has never been located. Stone cut using a tool which left an intriguing yet highly recognizable mark simply gone, excavated, and transported away somehow. We have always attempted to provide accurate information, and although we have our own opinions on said subjects, we feel it is far more important to convey all information, so that we all have an opportunity to come to our own conclusions based upon all the findings made during investigations. We attempt to provide that which we were, and still are, all being starved of. The whole picture was obscured from us, never actually teaching us how to apply our critical capacity to question the legitimacy of what we are told but to push buttons, repeat information, and pull levers. Our mission is to share as many events as can be found regarding the technological advancement and also the possible true age of man. To prove beyond any reasonable doubt that not only have humans been around far longer than currently attested, but we, as a species, not only have a far greater yet hidden history, many specialists around the globe also believe that we display traits of a past, a mass trauma which subjected us to such a difficult existence that behavioral traits within humans became prevalent demanded of by this hostile environment, some of which are still strongly displayed to this day within modern society. Although we have covered current problems with evolution theory, in relation to the missing leaps between species, vertebrates, or phyla groups, natural selection is a completely different animal. For a behavioral trait to become prevalent, however, like some often displayed within societal behaviors, particularly when it comes to procreation or what we seek in a mate, are all indicative of a past experience of cataclysm. Our work's mission was initially to convey to the world as many aspects of history, still completely a mystery, and most importantly, to expose the conditioning and circulation of fallacies, which for decades deceived modern society of a true tale of the history of our planet and especially our species. We began to notice that many of these ancient sites display similarities with each other, regardless of geographical distances. We have now identified countless sites which were undoubtedly the work of the same civilizations. 
Not only did these similarities show a sharing of technologies globally, thus proof of a global civilization, and due to having identified differentiations and similar features between certain sites, and the masonry techniques used therein, enabled us to make the first strongly supported successful identification of more than one lost civilization anywhere north of Giza's casing stones. Each subject we cover, not only adding a little bit more weight to our argument of past highly advanced civilization, but also expanding the field of evidence to prove its true case. It feels now that it is not an if, but rather a when in regards to truly knowing our true history. As our understanding of this lost past grows, so does our understanding of ourselves. It is an endeavor which we find highly compelling. The academic paradigm in regards to the chronological history of man, the claimed, continued, warts and all documented, completely linear journey to the modern day from a claimed birthplace upon the continent of Africa to the caves of Europe and Asia, becoming post-Ice Age Neoliths, all somehow mysteriously capable of incredible feats, all mysteriously deciding to build similar structures in similar ways of similar size, with no explanation even attempted. All this claimed as having happened and fully known of without a single gap. An institutional castle built from nothing but sand. The Bering Strait is home to a theory of the same name, crucial to this evolutionary tale of human development. Yet what resulted from research done by a handful of highly capable individuals of integrity, it is a site which proves beyond doubt that the Bering Strait theory is nothing but a lie, one which those who profit from this current paradigm due to steel have been revealed spending great efforts in protecting it from the truth, a truth mutated into a perceived conspiracy. The Bering Strait was a frozen landmass, connecting continents, crucial in explaining primitive man's travel across them. A modern historical paradigm, not only explaining the migration of man to the rest of the world, but it must have been at a particular specific time in history to fit currently funded scholarly accepted opinion on the development of man. Virginia Steen McIntyre, however, found fossils, stone tools, and strata dating back 200,000 years earlier than academically accepted. She was told to either repeat the excavation and provide fitting dates, or her findings would be thrown out. She stood by her research and eventually lost her funding. However, it seems that Virginia had a knack for studying areas which are clearly, if historical teachings be inaccurate, highly controversial areas of archaeological interest, for she was seemingly a thorn in their sides with her other previous research and subsequent discoveries too, specifically those made at other sites such as Huyatlaco, an archaeological site in the Valsaquillo Basin near the city of Puebla, Mexico. After excavations in the 1960s, the site became notorious due to geochronologist analysis from the research done in conjunction with steel and others also indeed indicated that human habitation at Huayatlaco dated to as far back as 250,000 years ago. Wikipedia states regarding these finds, quote, these controversial findings are orders of magnitude older than the scientific consensus for habitation of the New World, which generally traces widespread human migration to the New World to a maximum of 13,000 to 16,000 years ago." End quote. Although these two sites are a considerable distance from one another, they are crucial for the chronological storyline of modern claims regarding timelines of human migration slash habitation dates which they want to be perceived as far back within antiquity as being 13,000 years ago. However, this evidence proves that humans had already established these landmasses more than a quarter of a million years ago. Although Wikipedia predictably attempts retorts to these claims, 
To their credit, they have listed a vast array of incredibly talented, highly qualified specialists, along with their own testimonies and personal investigative conclusions, supporting the work of Virginia Steele McIntyre. It's also to its credit that they note the harassment received by these pioneers, who literally threw the rules out of the window in pursuit of the truth. Quote, Steen McIntyre claims that some of the original research team were harassed, viewed as incompetent, or saw their careers hampered due to their involvement in such a controversial and anomalous investigations. End quote. She would eventually lose access to funding, lambasted for her fines and claims never ceasing. Regardless of these attacks, we find Virginia and the many other courageous individuals commendable in their search for the truth. And they are undoubtedly areas which they have debunked with artifacts and dates, evidence so passionately argued as lies, it is almost complementary to her ability. This controversy is to us undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many astonishing ancient ruins which can be found throughout India. Ancient temples or caverns, often carved into giant boulders or directly out of the bedrock of Earth itself. Many of these ruins drenched in exquisite artwork, carvings created with such vision and accuracy that they boggle the minds of all who attempt to explain the methodology of their creator. We have covered a number of sites within India in the past, many of them so precise in their finish that they could have seemingly only been created using precision stone-cutting technology. And our next site of interest is of no exception. Located in the northern part of the state of Karnataka in South India, the village of Hampi has some extremely captivating ruins. Dotted with large boulders, the site is also home to some extremely puzzling relics. One of which is the ancient chariot, clearly a depiction of a once astonishing creation. The cart itself was not only clearly massive, but was pulled with elephants rather than horses. Clearly indicative of a highly capable group, this incredible chariot is one amongst an array of marvelously preserved architectural artifacts, most of which display a level of refinement created with such precision that modern man could only replicate such feats using machines, something modern academia claims has only ever been utilized by our own modern civilization. Thus, an explanation as to how the site, or indeed its smorgasbord of ancient precision-made stoneworks were made, eludes us to this day. And we hypothesize that the reason for this is due to mainstream historians' reluctance to consider what these ruins clearly indicate that they were once the work of a civilization that was not only highly advanced, but utilized stone-cutting technologies, methods of transportation, lifting and placement that rival even that of today's architectural capabilities. How can one peer upon such sites as that of Hampi, or indeed others, Pumapanku, Giza, Petra, etc., sites created with such accuracy? That to suggest they were created with soft metal tools or with the use of primitive measuring equipment is simply absurd. Furthermore, none of these ruins would be possible simply with the use of the human eye. The only logical explanation is that just like that of modern-day stonework, the stones were indeed machined, cut to such a high quality using precision tools, only then were they placed where they lay today. Hampi was predictably re-inhabited by ancestors based within permitted timelines, once being the capital of a previous Indian empire. What's intriguing about the site, however, is the mysterious, seemingly untouched boulders which dot its grounds. The question is, although they now appear to be geological, were they in fact once relics themselves, left by an even earlier civilization? If not, then why were these stones left where they are found today? Why were they built around rather than utilized, carved, or shifted? They were clearly ones of significance, and due to the fact ancient sanctuaries and fortresses are often re-inhabited, the possibility that they were indeed once carvings would logically make sense. The questions would be, just how old is this civilization? Who built the ancient site of Hampi? How did they build it? Were ancient high technologies utilized in its creation? If not, then how was it constructed? It is a place which we find 
highly compelling.